Hey man, how's it going? Well, remember this video? Today we'll be expanding a little bit more on that sort of Instagram grid challenge format and do some more product photography. But first, let's roll the intro. Mm -hmm. By the way, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Gabi and I'm very passionate about photography and travel, mostly on a budget. My guess is if you're here, maybe you're passionate about them too. So why not stick around and leave a subscribe? It takes you two seconds, but it really helps the channel and you can always change your mind. All right, I don't think I need this anymore. Before we get to the shooting, let's explain the challenge's rules. Number one is that I have to take three pics that will eventually end up on my Instagram feed, which is linked down here, by the way. Number two is that these three pics have to look consistent with each other. And also, number three, they have to share a common team. The major difference between this video and the previous one is that me and editor Gabi won't be sharing the same video again. Oh no, what a shame. Because it's just a bit too long to have shooting and editing at the same time, I think. Therefore, this video will only focus on how to take the pics and the next one that will come out probably next week will show you how to edit them. All right, now that we got the rules explained, let's get to the action. Oh yeah, but I also have to move the tripod though. Oh, it's so annoying. Actually, before we get to the action, I should explain what today's theme is, shouldn't I? So. Premising that, no, I won't just be doing product photography for each and every one of these challenges. Today's theme is product photography. <laughs> and specifically, it will be about books and flat lay photography. My arch nemesis. And now, let's get to the action for real. All right, the first book that I wanted to shoot at, it's this one, which is a photo book that I printed myself, thanks to Sal Digital, uh, which is a online service for prints and photo books and this kind of stuff. And well, they were offering a 100 euros discount to people that wanted to test out their uh, photo book professional line. Come on, they were offering 100 euros. You can better apply for it. But yeah, the quality is really good. And in case they still have the offer up, I will just have the link of their website in the description. You can just check it out and apply for yourself. It's, uh, it's basically a free photo book, so why not try it? Book review anytime soon? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, I know that by the rules I have to have my pictures to be looking consistent one with the other but I also wanted to try and represent each book's personality, if you will. And of course, um, what can I do with a book that's about 2020? Well, then I should probably just take a pic that looks like shit. This floor is going to be our background for this pic because I really enjoy this kind of ruined and destroyed texture and it's also a good color matchup, I think, with the, with, with the color of the book. Also, I want to show off the details in the texture, but not in a way that they are too distracting and they take attention out of my book. In order to do that, I will do a little trick that I learned from many, 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 many tries in uh, flat light photography, which is to separate the background and the subject. And by doing that, I will be using these two mini diaries here in order to just make some height difference from the floor to the book and in this way I can show the book and make sure that it's in perfect focus and have my texture still in focus but just slightly less so so their details will not be overpowering the old picture now it's time to figure out lighting and composition one lighting and composition later okay I ended up with this which is a very simple composition I just have a side light coming from here and a very very minimal sort of composition it will look something like this but i will be shooting with the 85 millimeters so to have some more compression and yeah i think we are done with this shot let's see how the raw file will look like we're back in the studio because i have a book and i have an idea the book is this one the wolf totem by Zhang Rong. and this book is one of my favorites it's the first and probably one of the biggest reasons why I have decided to travel in Mongolia. And if you ever plan to visit there too, I really suggest you read this because, because you'll just fall in love with Mongolia before even seeing it. <laughs> the idea is trying to replicate the inside of a Mongolian yurt and of course to place the book on it. For that I will need pillows, sort of a darkish place and a carpet. One more lighting and composing later. All right, here we are. So let me just turn this up. So as you can see, I decided to use these dark gray pillows in order to keep 
a little bit of the aesthetic consistency with the previous post which had a completely black background then in order to light the scene in this case i use my tiny aperture light that has a very very realistic sort of fire effect which will emulate of course the look of a fireplace and i will be shooting something along these lines and also In this case I will be shooting with the 16 to 35 that I'm currently filming with and there's that so let's see how the raw file looks like and for the last pick we're back in the dungeon so I thought since we took already a picture of something that relates to travel why not take a picture of a book that talks about photography so I decided to pick the visual toolbox by David Dushmin, Dushmin, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry. He's one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite photographers, so I really suggest you check his work out, he's, he's really good. But not only this is a great book, it's also a great contrast with this one that we shot earlier and you can see they match up pretty well color-wise. Now, since this is the last picture, let's switch up a bit. Regia, mandami il timelapse, per favore. Non ce l'hai la regia, scemo. Okay, this is what I came up with. I wanted to create a pattern for the background, so I picked some of these dark blue books and started laying them down. Then I realized I would need to create a height gap, just like I did in the first picture, to make my subject pop. So I removed a couple books from what I expected to be the middle of the frame and I built a tower. Once I placed the visual toolbox on the tower, I started to experiment with lighting. I wanted soft shadows, therefore I played around with the softbox for a bit. The last detail I thought to add was a tiny bit of light coming from my main slide opposite direction so to give a brighter edge to some of the books in the background. I made it orange so to recall at the previous shot, cause remember, gotta stay consistent. Okay, everything is prepared and I just need to take the pictures. Now, I think I will be using the 85mm, so I can make great use of that sweet sweet f1.8 and yeah, let's see what the row looks like. And there you have it. Three pics that are just about ready to be shared. Now it's time to send these files to my mate editor Gabi and see how he makes them pop up even more. But that is a story for next week. And if you don't want to miss it, remember to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends if you enjoyed it of course. Also if you want to find out if I posted these pics, don't forget to find me in the other social medias which are linked down below. Well, have a great weekend and as always I will be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye!